today we're going to look at the remainder and factor theorems. We're going to use the uh, synthetic division that we talked about yesterday. So we're going to do a little warm-up here using our synthetic division. It says, if I'm given this polynomial and the remainder of f of x when divided by x minus 9 is 1, then what is the value of k? Okay, so there's a k. They tell us some other things. Looks different than what we did yesterday. But if you know, going in, because I'm telling you, we're going to use synthetic division, we're going to start it just like we did all of the rest of them, right? So I've got my polynomial. I'm going to write down my coefficients. So my first coefficient is 7, then negative 63, then 5, then k, then negative 80. And then if it's being divided by x minus 9, what goes out here? 9. And then what else do I know that I didn't know yesterday? OK, yes, but I did know that yesterday. What, what else, what other information did they give me? The remainder one. Everybody's testing today. Like, nothing's working right. See, it's not just me. Um, all right, so now I'm going to work this just like we worked every single other thing that we did. So I am going to bring down my 7. 9 times 7 is 63. Oh, I put a 60. Goodness, 63. I add those, I get 0. 9 times 0 is 0. Add those, and I get 5. 9 times 5 is 45. I add these, and what do I get? K plus 45. K plus 45. It's not 45K because I'm not multiplying, right? Then I multiply 9 times this, so that is 9 times K plus 45 because that's literally what we're doing, right? When there's variables, you actually do less. Okay, so I finished my synthetic division that we knew how to do yesterday. But I need to figure out what K is. Do you see a really easy, obvious um, equation we could set up? Because how would you normally find, what would we do to find one? We'd add those two together, right? So if I take negative 80 and add 9 times k plus 45, that's going to equal 1. Now that's just a simple equation for me to solve for k. So I'm going to add 80, I get 9 times k plus 45. That's equal to 81. Divide by 9, so k plus 45 equals 9. So what does k equal? Negative 36. What questions do you have? Part of being a strong math student and an advanced math student is being able to reason through things that might not look exactly like what you've seen before. But there's no reason we couldn't set this up and do, I mean, it's, the steps are exactly the same. Yeah, there's a variable in it, but it doesn't change the process. And that's one thing you have to remind yourself sometimes. It doesn't mean it's more difficult. It's the exact same process. It just looks a little different. Okay, what questions we got? Awesome. All right, so now let's do another little part to this warm-up. So I have this polynomial here, and it says to divide it by x plus 4. So just straight up divide it. So it's just plain old synthetic division here. So I'll have negative 4 on the outside, and I'll have 1, 1, negative 4, and 41. Then we're just going to straight up do our synthetic division. We get 1, negative 4, negative 3, 12, 8, negative 32, 9. So, and since all it said was divide it, then our answer is what we get, which is x squared minus 3x plus 8 plus 9 over what? x plus 4. Okay, and so that's my answer. Right? Okay, so then the other part to this is we want to find f of negative 4. We just want to evaluate this function. So f of negative 4 is going to be negative 4 cubed plus negative 4 squared minus 4 times negative 4 plus 41. Right? That's how we evaluate. We're just substituting it in. When I cube negative 4, I know I'm going to get a negative number. 4 times 4 is 16. What's 16 times 4? 
64. And then I'm going to square negative 4, so that's plus 16. Then I have negative 4 times negative 4, that's another positive 16. And then plus 41. Okay? So I'm going to take you through what goes on in my brain to combine all that. I know that 16 and 16 is 32. And I know that 32 is half of 64. This is negative and this is positive. So all that together is going to give you a negative 32. And then I still have plus 41. So f of negative 4 is equal to 9. Now we just did two completely different things in A and B. But what do you notice similarity wise? Exactly. So the remainder that we got here is the same as the answer we got here, right? And this says x plus 4 is my factor. Well, that means that x equals negative 4, and that's what we evaluated. Okay, do you see, do you see how that works? If I wanted f of 6 or 8, then this is going to get a lot more complicated, right? Just because we have to cube things. But this is going to stay pretty much the same. And this one was a lot easier to do, right? So if you want to evaluate a function at a specific number, you can just do synthetic division with that number, and whatever the remainder is, is your answer. It'll work every single time, okay? And that's what our remainder theorem says. It says, if a polynomial function f of x is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is f of c. Okay. And when you use synthetic division to evaluate, so let's think about like synthetic division means like fake division because you're not really dividing, but it has the same result as if you divided. So this is called synthetic substitution. Synthetic substitution, because we didn't really substitute. We did a fake substitution, but got the same result as if we actually substituted. Okay. What questions do you have? All right. So since it says um, the remainder when f of x is divided by x plus 3 is negative 20, then this x plus 3 I know gives me that x equals negative 3. So what is f of negative 3? Negative 20, right? So they're telling me the answer, basically. If I evaluated it at negative 3, I'd get negative 20. Well, knowing that, then I can find k. That's, we're going to use the uh, synthetic division. So I have negative 3 on the outside. Then on the inside, I have 1, 8, 12, negative k and negative 14. And they told me my remainder is negative 20. Right. So you figure out what k is. When you're done, check yourself up here. All right, 
Any questions about how to get seven there? Are we good? Hopefully if you didn't get seven, it's because, you know, you didn't add or subtract right. Not that you don't understand the concept because that's usually the case. All right. So that was synthetic substitution or the remainder theorem. So let's talk about the factor theorem. The factor theorem says, given a polynomial, f of x, x minus c is a factor if and only if f of c equals 0. Okay, so given a polynomial f of x, x minus c is a factor if and only if f of c equals 0. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. I didn't call it the factor theorem. I didn't give you all these words. But we were dividing things where we got the remainder is 0. And I told you, if the remainder is 0, that means this is a factor, like it divides evenly. All right, so we're going to use that idea to help us with these. So this says, if, if I'm given this polynomial and x minus 7 is a factor, then what is the value of k? So we're still using synthetic division here. This is a third degree polynomial, which means I should have four numbers inside. I have four terms, so I'm good. So I'll have 2, negative 7, negative 53, and k. And outside goes 7. Anything else I need to fill in before I start? Do I know what the remainder is? It's 0. Because if it tells me x minus 7 is a factor, then that means f of 7 equals 0. And so that has to be my remainder. OK, does that make sense? So it's like this, this is kind of the same thing we just did, except the other ones that said this is the remainder. Here it said it's a factor, then you have to know the remainder. OK, so go ahead and go through this and find k. What questions do you have? We good? Makes sense? Yeah. All right, then if you don't have any questions and we're all good, you do number five on your own, 100%.
Oh, you forgot the eights. You did. You were. You have to add these two to equal zero. That makes sense. So you had. You were all of all of this was one hundred percent correct. But then over here, you left off the eight. You have to add those two to get zero. All righty. Any questions at all? We're good? All right, so number six says, if f of x equals this polynomial, oh, goodness gracious, um, and f of negative 5 equals 0, then find all the zeros of f of x algebraically. All right, so I'm going to tell you right now that you can't factor that by just straight up factoring like, like we can do on other things. Um, so I'm going to have to try and narrow this down with my synthetic division. If f of negative 5 equals 0, what does that tell me? x plus 5 is a factor. Very good. So if f of negative 5 equals 0, so that means here that x is equal to negative 5, so x plus 5 equals 0, so x plus 5 is a factor. Okay? So that's one of my factors. If I want to figure out what I multiply that by to get this, I'm going to have to divide that into here. So we can do that with synthetic division. So I'll have negative 5 on the outside. Then on the inside, I'll have 3, 5, negative 42, 40. Anything else? Zero. Zero where? There's no constant term. This is a fourth degree polynomial. There should be five numbers in here. There is no constant term, so I need a zero here. What else do I know that I fill in before I start? The remainder is zero because it is a factor. Okay. So now that I have all that, now I'm going to do my synthetic division. Bring down my 3, negative 15, negative 10. 50, 8, negative 40, 0, 0. Okay. So what I get from this, right, is that I've, I have this thing partially factored. I know at this point that f of x equals x plus 5 times whatever this is, right? And so this here, I'd have 3x to the what power? Third. Third. Very good. Minus 10x squared plus 8x. And then there is no constant term. So this has been factored out. If I multiply these two things back together, I will get this. That's why we just did all that. So I need to factor this. Does it have a GCF? Well, x. X. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply that, or multiply, factor that out. I'm going to factor it all the way to the front so it doesn't get lost in this stuff. So I'm going to have X times X plus 5 times 3X squared minus 10X plus 8. So now that trinomial, I need to just factor. So you go ahead and factor that, put it back in here, and find your zeros. I'm not factoring for you again.
So I went ahead and finished it for you because the afternoon classes are a little bit shorter than the morning classes and the bells are all weird right now. So um, that's what you should end up with. All right, your assignment is in Delta Math. 